Hey watch friends, today we're going to be checking out a new brand for the channel. This is the German micro brand Voldhof and we're going to be debuting it in a big way. We actually are taking a first look at three watches here. I will have full detailed reviews coming up for each of these so do stay tuned for that. But initially I just wanted to go ahead and enjoy in this with you and take a quick first look, get a feel for them, see what we can expect coming up here and see if any particular ones are your interest. Alright, so this first one is different box than the other two, and I've already checked these out briefly here. This one's a more basic cardboard construction, and I will say this one I believe is the cheapest of the models. You can see their crest and branding on there, and you pop that open, foam inside, it does have branding there as well. And as I mentioned, this isn't exactly how it ships because I have already opened this up. But inside, you've got the warranty card, and then you have microfiber cloth. So pretty basic packaging, but nice overall. Then as we pop out, here is the first watch. This is the Multimatic 2, and this is the Coral colorway. There's a lot to talk about with this. I'll go through quickly their basic specs, but of course in the full review, I'll get these on caliper scale, etc., and we'll actually give our own measurements. They call this one 41 millimeters for the case. The thickness is listed as 11.4 millimeters. This features for movement the Miyoda 9100, which we've checked that out previously, I believe, on the Sovereign uh, calendar, if I recall correctly, or Sovereign uh, calendar. This, this one uh, features a lot going on here with complications. As you can see, for the basic layout of that movement, you're going to have your primary hour and minute hand, but you don't have a running second hand. Additionally, at the 12 o'clock position, you're going to have the power reserve indicator, so you can see that going through there up to the 40 hours. Then shifting over here, you can see you have a day complication as well, so the day marked there. Then over here on that subdial, you have the month as well. And then here, have a window for the date complication. And then finally, the 24 hour uh, running uh, as, as well. So you, you have a lot of complications going on for this. Consistent with that construction or with that uh, movement, you can see it has, of course, your crown, but then additionally you have a pusher, and the pusher, I believe, controls your month there. Let's go ahead and check that out. Yeah, so you can see that advance as we click through. But let's check out this basic as far as the watch. So now that we have just the general specs out of the way, I mean, look at the layering of this. This is one of the things that's always struck me. I've seen these a lot in uh, in pictures, but this is uh, the first uh, first time checking out this brand as we talked about at the outset. But look at that layering, look at that coloration. And we'll, of course, in the full review, get much better footage of this across uh, different lighting, dial close-ups, those kind of things. But you can see there's a lot of patterning that's going on varied textures across with the sub dials, the actual inlaid with uh, the um, lowest portion of the dial. You can see a lot of different patterns, a lot of different cuts there. Then of course the raise for your power reserve. Then out on the perimeter, you've got that raise out there as well. So you've got a nice, uh, I guess, chapter ring out there, kind of a raised, uh, raised extra thick chapter ring. You've got the mix of your uh, hash markers, which are applied there. And then you've got your numerals as well at your 12, three, six, and nine but just really cool look. Now let's check out the case for this. Pardon the, uh, the fingerprints. This one I'm sure is gonna be fingerprint magnet, uh, but it does have a lot of polish uh, on this. You can see polish accents there. But then with this one, look at that light play for that. It has these milled in. So that's, let's check out. You can see that's actually cut into there. So that is a true milled in for that. That's not just a surface finish or an etching, but you can see the different texture there. Then as you come out to the lugs, you know, nice downturn to the lugs, they do sit below the, uh, the case back there. But you can see you have screw uh, accents to actually hold in these straps. As far as the strap itself, this is 22 millimeters. All of these are actually 22 millimeters for the straps, but you can see this has leather strap, signed buckle there. Now let's check out this case back. So it does have an exhibition case back. It has a lot of fingerprints, which I'm sure for me there. This did come fully wrapped and all those kind of things with, uh, with plastic as well. But you can see their custom uh, custom rotor for that. Look at that nice machine turning on that. And then it has their, their logo, if I can get that to say still. You got your Geneva striping on the movement itself. And then a basic screw in as far as, uh, or held in with screws for the case back itself. And a lot of polish there as well. Quick release spring bars, which that's a nice touch. And again, 22 millimeter straps, so you can change that out. But let's just check that out as far as moving that around. Look at the way that plays with the light. I really think this uh, this color is going to be quite alluring. And I like the way, check out that globe subdial or that earth subdial as well, how that kind of plays with the color too. So I'm looking forward to checking this out further, but I'm not gonna spend too much time on any one of these. So let's set that aside and we'll bring back the next one. All right, so let's see, which one do we have here? So this one now has a different construction for the box. You can see a slide off slip cover there. Now you actually have 
this seems like it's a real wood for um, for the box and then you actually have you can see raised with badging there so you can tell this is getting to their higher uh, higher end as far as their lineup okay so next up we have the ultramatic so not to be confused with the last one we just looked at which was the multimatic 2 this is the ultramatic 2 packaging is going to be similar on the inside warranty card all that kind of good stuff but let's set that aside check out the actual watch all right so this one is the black sand variant which as you can see you know it really actually presents to me as a dark blue uh, for that however they do have a blue variant what makes this i believe the black sand is you can see that perimeter there that does have black accent on that whereas the blue one i believe is a uh, brighter like more royal blue uh, and it does carry through as well but this one though uh, the basic specs on it according to them is the case 42 and a half millimeters the thickness is stated as 11 and a half millimeters on this one this one as far as the movement though this is the real claim to fame and it's actually going to be shared on the next one we'll look at as well but this has the in pardon my pronunciation just as with the brand name this has the um, hangzhou hz 3415 so that is as you can see here that is a tourbillon or tourbillon movement and we'll get that started up momentarily but one of the things that's so sweet here you can see the power reserve at the nine o'clock position this does actually have a stated 72 hour power reserve we'll get that clocked for the full review and see if that actually holds true additionally with this particular one you can see there is a day night and 24 uh, sub dial there so you have the day night configuration get a good look at that one really nice touch there and you can see again a lot of milling a lot of etching uh, into that and then uh, here you have kind of that banner so it carries through just like with the uh, just like the last one did where the power reserve was there that carries through with that same kind of aesthetic so you can already kind of get a feel for their design language but let's get that started up so this as you can see it is not going to be a screw down crown which is kind of what you'd expect here for a manual wind movement and you can watch that power reserve look at that spool up and then let's check out that tourbillon look at that thing go oh man that's so gorgeous and as you can see here that actually is see-through as well i neglected with the last one to have to put it on wrist i should have done so there i'll bring that back over but just this gives you an idea so this is on my six and a half inch wrist you know it really doesn't fit too badly it's a little definitely on the large side uh, for for me particularly with the uh, the lugs and we'll get a measurement on the lug to lug and everything but there's an idea of how that looks this has as far as the strap you can see this again has that leather strap different buckle here though this one actually has a deployant um, clasp for uh, for that so you can see that just pops closed there and then this actually has I believe these yeah so you just push and pop those open and I want to check out check that out let's actually get this pop free so we can get a better look of the case back because this is really gonna be worth checking out look at how pretty that case back is I mean look at all that machining look at all the accents absolutely awesome to look at there really looking forward to getting close-ups of this as well and then you can see the basic construction is going to be very similar held in with screws here again as well highly polished again as well so just like with the last one and then this too again 22 millimeter straps and does have quick release spring bars the case itself the construction is going to be very reminiscent different sizing but very reminiscent of that multimatic too that we just looked at a moment ago you can see this one does not have these screws on the lugs but the actual overall case aesthetic you can see it's very similar so it's still going to have those milled accents still going to have similar uh, accents as far as the polishing let's go and bring that back so here it is you can see these two side by side just to get an idea as far as the overall feel but they have a very similar look and then here it is just sitting on wrist to give you an idea there but back to this one so that um, tourbillon obviously that's what seals the show for uh, for this one and especially with being the dual barrel and having the extremely long uh, power reserve i really like too you can see the skeletonization you can see my hand going through there with the tourbillon as well so that's a cool touch but that's not to be overshadowed or that's not to completely overshadow though. look at those textures look at the texture at the 12 o'clock position look at that texture running down the dial really nice touches there i like those aspects and then the uh, overall layout and configuration you can see this one just has a single numeral at the 12 o'clock position for this particular one all right so let's go ahead and set that aside and then bring over the last one all right so this uh this last one here got dog hair all over it's never ending all right so this uh this last one this is the continental um is the uh, movement or is, is the uh, model of this one you can see the packaging is going to be the exact same as the last one we just looked at again still comes with the warranty card all that kind of good stuff 
this one though one of the things i really like is this comes on a bracelet which is big for me i'm a big fan of a uh, of bracelets in general um so that's a that's a nice touch but let's go ahead and check this out you can see i've got this question here because i already did actually size this for uh, for my wrist so i can get a quick uh, quick view and give you a better look without having the strap um, hanging over a bracelet hanging over so let's go ahead and just immediately pop that on wrist and get a better look at this. You can see, so this, um, I will say, is held in with pins for it, and it is a butterfly. It does not have, that I saw at least, any half links uh, for that, or three quarter links, or what have you. So you can see, I had to go a little bit loose uh, on that, but it doesn't fit bad. It wears a little bit on the hefty side, uh, as far as weight, but we'll talk about that, of course, in the full review, get this actual spec, so it's not just the subjective feel here. All right, so let's check out the actual watch itself, though. First, the biggest thing, far and away, is, I'm sure you notice, Look at when I hit that at an angle, you can see that Damascus dial. So this one has, uh, with the obsidian, it is going to be a blacked out Damascus dial. So that has a nice kind of etch to it. And I can tell you this one is going to be a treat to get filmed. Between that tourbillon, as well as playing with that light and seeing the way that that picks up with kind of that shadowing and that ink spill uh, effect that you get with the Damascus. But that's going to be true of the entire Continental. There are different colors that are available for that, um, but they have all of those characteristics. The basic specs, this one's stated as 41 millimeters for the case. The thickness is stated at 12 millimeters. And then this has the exact same movement that we just looked at in the last one, the Hangzhou 8Z3415. Uh, Let's go ahead and start that up again, just because it never hurts to watch some of that tourbillon action. So as you can see here, just like with uh, with the last one, you can see that this does have a power reserve there at the nine o'clock position. This is a different aesthetic. That one um, was more of kind of like a uh, see-through or skeletonized piece to see through to the movement. This one you can see has those accents there, zero, half, and full. So it has kind of like a sub dial disc in there to actually kind of close that up, but it does still have your numerals so you can actually see the power reserve there. And then again, just like with the last one, uh, this one, instead though, of having a day night indicator for it, you can see this one goes with a globe. So it's kind of like a mashup between the first we looked at the Multimatic and the Ultramatic. So this one, because of the same movements, the same layout, but that has a 24 hour configuration and you can see, sorry, we'll get better lighting there, but you can see that has an accent red there that kind of points to uh, the time. So you can see for your actual 24 hours. And then this one does not, unlike the other two, does not have that kind of uh, border or barrier uh, at the 12 o'clock position, which I think is a great call because when you've got a dial like that, you want to see as much of it as possible. And you've already got that tourbillon with the, uh, the big window there. This one, just like the last one, is going to be see-through. So you get that skeletonization uh, all the way straight through the movement, which is exactly what you want to see on this. But then again, same thing as far as the finishing on this just like it was with the last one absolutely gorgeous for that as well you can see the finishing of the case back itself is different than the last one but the exhibition movement or the exhibition window and the movement itself is going to be very much uh, similar to the last one this one does not have quick release spring bars it does though still have 22 millimeter straps as we talked about your butterfly clasp here you can see just double pushers machine turning as well the articulation seems to be pretty decent on this it does have i would say somewhat decent sized uh, links as far as the three link construction for that but let's check that out so we'll get a better feel for uh, for this and share full uh, full feedback in the full review one of the things that's neat is you can see this does have a lot of angular cuts so let's look at the case side there and you can see this has kind of a mix of brushing and polishing this one is a little less uh, generous with the polish application uh, on the case side at least, which is welcome for me. But then it does bring it up, you can see here at the bezel, a lot of polish there as well, and a whole heck of a lot of polish on this bracelet. You've got running down the length of the links on the exterior of those where it does have all of that polishing going on. So there is definitely still a lot of polish here. One of the things that's cool though, this bezel at a glance looks like it's round. However, if you look close, it actually carries through with the angles of the case as well. Subtle lines you can see in there, but you can see how the, the mirrored surface kind of splits as you go through. But because it is a mirror surface, it kind of tends to blend together. So it almost reflects like it looks, uh, looks round there. So it's kind of an optical illusion. Additionally, check out this case. So you can see this piece of the case is actually kind of planted in there as best I can tell. It does have a gap for, uh, for that. So that kind of sits in there uh, for, uh, for the construction, which that's a unique element um, as well. So overall, though, to me, the thing that's really going to be exciting to look at, of course, the movement, but that dial, man, look at that dial. I actually absolutely love that Damascus finishing on that, so I'm looking forward to uh, exploring that further. So that's, uh, that's all I have for, uh, for today. Let's go ahead and bring all three of these back and put them side by side. 
But just wanted to give you a kind of quick uh, quick first look. I realize we're a little long on the video here, but with looking at three watches, not too bad for, uh, for any of these. So this gives you an idea though, as far as the sizing and overall aesthetic of each of these. You know, I'm really digging that coral in the middle, the way that picks up the light. Maybe it's just this particular lighting condition, but that really pops like crazy. That Damascus is just absolutely gorgeous but this blue is no slouch either. That has a nice deep saturated coloration for that and cool layouts all the way around. It's neat to see you can see a very cohesive, I think, design language. Um, they clearly have their brand style, um, though this one is of course the most different. These two are more reminiscent, but each of them with the layouts and configuration, I think are very similar to each other in some respects, but at the same time, still wildly different elements to, uh, to each of these. All right, so there you have it. I hope this has been a fun uh, fun first look at, uh, at a new brand for uh, for the channel. If you did enjoy it, as always, do hit that uh, that like button. And if you haven't done so, definitely smash that subscribe button. Of course, have, as I mentioned, the reviews of these coming up. And of course, always have new ones coming out. Thanks for watching.